All right, hey everybody. There are currently no videos that I could find online showing the installation of the self bailing kit on an alpaca uh, pack raft. So while this one is not going to be fantastic, it'll at least give you maybe a basic idea of how I did mine. Um, so here's my raft. This is the llama size. If you have one of the, the larger or the smaller one, um, I forget the name, Denali's one and then another one. The, the, the location may not be exactly right where we, where I, where I glued the stuff down or, or contact some into the stuff down, but at least you can see, and you, you'll have the kit yourself so you can, you can put the new, uh, the new seat in there and see kind of where it needs to go. It's, it's pretty easy uh, but again I just there's not one on here right now so I wanted to I wanted to provide provide one for everybody so I'm gonna sh zoom me in here here is the piece that the um, new seat slips into it slips in through here and the front of it butts up into this area right here and then the front foot pad locks in to this right here so um, the places that will be glued in there's three strips um, one on either one on either side here's one here's the other one and then uh, one in the front the side that's going to be glued down is the rougher side of course I can't show you but you'll see it once you have it in your hands one side's a little bit rougher and one side's a little bit one side is a little bit um, smoother you want to do the rough side down um, a good frame of reference point is um, right here in the front we've got about three inches between this seam uh, that's where it starts turning in the front of the, the, the curve of the front of the boat starts you want to be about three inches back from that and then about another I think this is about uh, four inches right here the seam is actually right here um, not not this right here I think that that was where we had some tape um, that that edged where our contact cement went so about four inches between the front um, piece and then the side piece same same for this side about four inches uh, we set it up and put the the seat in in place not fully uh, not fully blown up like that but we but we had the back of the seat fully seated into the back of the raft and then once we did that we laid this over the top of it and marked with a like a, like a paint marker you can see the residue of what we had there um, and, and right there we marked the edges of where we wanted to glue and then we put some of this painters tape you can still see some up here we marked the edges and then we cemented we did I did three coats of, of the cement um, waited 20 minutes in between each coat and then came back and maybe like three or five minutes after the last coat um, put it uh, stuck stuck this piece to the contact cement um, and I used I forget the name of it I got it right here LA4123. This is the stuff, a uh, Clifty, I believe, is the name of it. Um, this is the stuff that's recommended by Alpaca for, for you to use. So it works really good. Um, so once we've done that, once all, and th this was done probably three days ago, so um, everything is really dried and ready to go. The next step is to punch three quarter inch holes all along. Uh, right here oh and also one more thing the edge of the side um, glued piece we got it as close as we could to the to the actual inflated part of the raft there's probably depending on where it's at between a quarter and a half inch space um, because it has a little bit of curve to it um, but yeah we just kind of tucked it in there as much as we could and the, and the, um, the seat fits in here just fine if you if you push it all the way up against the edge 
so what I'm going to do now and maybe attempt to film at least a little bit of it is the punching of the holes. I'm going to hit. My brother-in-law has one that has the factory self baler, so I was able to measure his. And I'm going to go right in the center of this. I'm not going to. I'm not going to try to go to either side. I'm going to go right down the middle, and I'm going to fit as many as I can in, and I'm going to leave about a half an inch in between each hole, and then a half an inch on the end. So there may end up being I don't know, 20 or maybe 18, 16 to 18 holes on either side. Um, so yeah, and and I'm going to do it from the top. We'll see how that goes. I don't know if bottom or top is better, but I'm going to start from the top. So this is what it looks like when the seat is actually in there. Uh, you can't, well, you maybe you could, but it would be really hard to fit the seat in there when it was fully inflated. I could not do that. So you want to like half inflate it and then get it up in there and then tuck the back into uh, the rear of the pack raft. And also one thing to note, um, one thing we were curious on is how this would look once this was in here. Like, was this connection point, should it be here or should it be here? Like, you know, flipping this piece right here, if we flipped it, that connection would be over here. And that's not how it needs to be. The connection point from the part that attaches to the bottom of the boat and the, the, the fabric that holds the seat needs to be set away from the edge of the boat. If this does not need to be here. It needs to be right here. That gives space for the uh, water to circulate and go in and out of the, the uh, self-bailing holes we're about, to, we're about to cut. So this is, this is my hole punch that I got. This is just from Amazon General. I, I don't, I don't, I've never heard of that brand before, but um, it's a three quarter inch hole punch and I've done a little bit of testing with it and it doesn't cut as good as I had hoped but that was a different material that I was cutting so I'm hoping that this cuts through the uh, bottom of the raft pretty good. I've got it sitting here. I am going to cut from the inside or punch the hole from the inside and I've got it sitting on concrete so there's nothing to absorb the blow and we'll see if it um, damages the edge of the of the hole punch here if it does I can get a something sacrificial under there um, actually as I'm thinking it through I'll probably get something sacrificial to start with because I really don't want to mess this hole punch up on my first on my first hole and then have 20 others to do without a hole punch without a sharp hole punch Big old hammer here and my hole punch. And I've got this sign here, it's like a quarter inch thick, as a sacrificial piece, uh, so I'm not banging right onto the concrete. And you gotta hit pretty hard um, to get it go, to go through here. Um, so here we go, let's try the first one. I'm in about three quarters of an inch off the edge, and like I said, I'm right in the center of the, of the piece. Here we go. Oh man, that worked fantastic. Oh. So there's the there's the piece right there. We'll punch that out. Here's the hole we just made. Man, that went really well. Um, so now I'm just gonna do the rest of this side. And then we'll flip over this side. I'll, I'll come back to you when I've got all these holes punched. So here's what it looks like when it's all done. Um, the holes turned out really good. I did have to sharpen, because you've got some files, I did have to sharpen my uh, hole punch a couple of times because it wasn't one to punch through easily. Um, once I sharpened them, I'd get you know six or seven good holes and then it would start to get dull and I'd have to uh, resharpen. Anyway, here they are. Let's see, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. 16 holes on each side. Um, hopefully that's enough. I left a pretty good space. Uh, of course, each one's different. I didn't measure them out. Some people who are 
more attentive to detail will probably want to uh, measure it. But I just kind of got close. They give you a, a, a enough space, I think, where you can you don't have to be exact. Uh, as long as you're within, you know, I would think, at least a half inch away from any of the sides, if not more than that. Of course, that's just barely over half inch right there. And on the back, I've got probably at least an inch. Just, just the way that it landed. Anyway, that's what it looks like when it's done. I'm now going to install some uh, thigh straps because if you're thinking about doing the self bailing kit, kit, something to note is you're going to sit up higher in the in the raft, so you're going to be more tippy. Uh, so it's probably a good idea to add thigh straps to your raft. Um, I bought some, I think they're Harmony, uh, thigh straps that usually go onto a sit on top kayak. Uh, but I bought some D rings here that I'm going to use some of the Clifty contact cement. Here's the straps right there. I really don't like these. They're not lightweight at all, but they're good for my purposes now. And then I've got these, uh, D-rings that I'm going to add to the sides of the boat so I can strap them on. I got to do some measuring first um, and I don't know if this will be actually part of the video but just wanted to throw that out there. I'll probably do a little snippet at the end installing these as well. Alright so here is my taping for my uh, thigh strap D-ring attachment points. Uh, you got two in the back here, and then I already had this previously from the, I'm assuming the previous owner of the pack raft put that in there for like a water bottle or something like water bottle uh, snap point. I keep mine on my pack, so I don't need it. So I'm using that front one, um, and then right there I've got the other, other spot taped off. I've scuffed them up a little bit just to give the, the glue a little something to grab onto. And I will start putting the contact cement on right now. I've already put the first layer on my three D-rings. And now I'm going to move to the raft. All right, this is pretty self-explanatory, but I'll, I'll at least uh, show how much I put on here. So, got your glue. This is very, can be very messy. Also, this stuff is really potent smelling. So, I'm inside, but it's a big room. Um... It's not, not as bad as it could be. I'm putting on, I'm not going crazy with it because I'm doing three layers. Um, eventually there'll be a lot more than what I have on here. But for this first coat, I'm just trying to make sure it's all got an even thin coat on it. And you really want to mask off. I went a little bit past, not, not on this one as much, but on the other ones I I went a little bit past uh, my marks because um, you want to make sure the edges have contact cement on them um, in order for it to glue down good. Okay, so that's what it looks like. That'll sit for 20 minutes or so. Le 20 minutes or less. I, I wouldn't go more than 20 minutes. I don't think it needs it. Unless you have really, really poor ventilation and it's really humid outside, then you might have to let it sit the whole 20 minutes. Um, but that's what it'll look like. I'm going to do the other the other two spots now. Okay, we got the back two D-rings on. They went on really good. That was after uh, three coats. And on the third coat, I it, it, it was less than five minutes after I put the contact cement on and glued them on there. Uh, so now we've just got this last one. And I'm going to remove the tape around it just so we don't inadvertently get any tape under under the d-ring and also this one I'm the other ones were smooth like it's on t they're kind of on top of the um, the inflation inflated portion of the raft this one's on the side and it's got some uh, little wrinkles there I'm unsure about that I guess I, I could inflate inflate it a little bit more um, but we'll just see how it goes it may just grab on there no problem all right yeah 
Yeah, that's. Hmm. Maybe if I just push it, it's grabbing really good, but I don't want any wrinkles under there. I'm gonna have to let the camera go. Actually, maybe if I can sit it up back here. No, I can't. Okay, I'll be back. All right, so here it is. It's on there. Um, there is a slight wrinkle right there. Can't. Well, yeah, yeah, you can see it kind of right there. It's grabbed in a little bit, but the rest of it's good, and it is impossible. It's already impossible for me to pull that thing off of there, and it's only been on there for 30 seconds. Um, so I think we'll be good. I'm going to let all this dry. I am going to test fit the straps just to see how they look and how they feel. Um, I'll show that in a second. Okay. Let's just see how she does here. Put the, the buckle part towards the front. I already kind of did this and laid them out before just to get an idea where to put the D ring so everything should be fine. Yep. I got them back or one one buckle up here, one buckle back here. But no, I think that's exactly what I need. My leg can be in there securely. Tighten them up right here in my hands. I'm gonna just get out of the way and I'm not banging on the buckles. And this isn't banging on my sides or digging into my sides here, so I'm happy. The one last thing that I should have thought about but didn't, and maybe I can whip something up, is, is a backrest. So the one that I came with, when you're down in the boat, it works great. But now I'm, you know, four inches higher and I need something across the middle of my back to help support me because I feel like I'm, I want to lean back a little bit more. But I, I looked up some stuff online and maybe I can whip something up before I leave and use these as my connection points for the backrest. That's it. I got my thigh straps. I got my self-bailing in there. I'm ready to go. See you.